what's up guys your fellow oreo here i'm here to give everybody a um good old full tutorial of hell hall td now it's not going to be easy to talk about this because there's like so many things to mention in this game but um yeah i just want you guys to um keep in mind that uh even though i do explain everything and uh, i try to give as much advice as possible um if you're first trying out this map, you will for sure fail, <laughs> no matter what. Like, I failed many times, even when I was first starting off. It's not like, oh, after this tutorial, I'm going to be, like, the best Hellhawk player ever. But I mean, like, <laughs> yeah, I've... I took a while to, um... It took me a while to, um, actually get accustomed to this game. So, um, for the most part, it's just knowing the levels and knowing your units knowing what units hold which levels, all those types of things. Um, the, yeah, I mean, that's the main part. Um, this is the actual... This this is the version that you should be playing. It's the latest, uh, or I should say the most recent patch for Hellhawk TV, 5.0.74. Um, if you are wondering how I'm playing on Classic and... Um, like, in my competitive Hellhawk TV videos, if you're wondering how I'm playing on Classic, it's because I'm playing on Ent. So, uh, basically on the Ent website, you, um, download, it's on the same page. Like, you would download Warcraft 3 Connect, and then, um, you also download, like, an older patch for Warcraft 3, and that's how I'm playing on it. And basically, they give you the instructions there. You click on local area network, click on the game on um, on Warcraft 3 Connect, and then you just join it. It should show up. So, yeah. Um, without further ado, let's just get this started. Just start explaining some stuff. I hope I cover, like, I hope I'm able to cover everything. I, I don't know. The one thing I can't do is go over all the units. That's just going to be on you to explore and check out yourself. Um, I'm not going to go like over every single unit. Um, I don't know if I'm going to make like another another tier list. Obviously the last tier list is like way outdated and terrible. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know. <sighs> okay, so starting things off, usually you just do profit all or the standard modes, P-A-A-C. So you could even just type dash A or just dash and it just goes to the standard modes. Let's type test and let's pause the game real quick. Um, actually, what is the... Okay, food max is the command for maximum food. So let's do that, just for now, just for... You know what, we'll do that after. Um. Obviously, this isn't a command in the usual game. This is just on single-player mode that you get to see all these commands. Um, I didn't even know it says resume. <laughs> what the fuck? Uh, anyways. As you can see, we'll just go down to the basics. So as you can see, um, we picked PAAC mode, which is the standard mode. The P stands for profit. Which is this builder, Profit Builder. A stands for all. So Profit, all. Everybody gets to choose the Profit Builder. On my team, on the enemy team, like on both teams, everybody's Profit. And the AC at the end stands for all champions. So basically, um, after level 5, every single level, there's at least one champion. And... Um, yeah, basically in, th in those modes, that means that there's going to be always a champion after level 5. Um, you could also do... If you do just dash PA, I'm pretty sure um, there's no champion. Um, another mode, which I couldn't pause in the beginning, like it just won't let me. Even if I type like dash pause in the beginning, it doesn't work because the game still registers with this dash. And that dash already starts the game in... Um, well, yeah. It already starts as the standard mode, so yeah, I'm not able to pause it, unfortunately. But you saw PR mode, which is another common mode that's um, being played um, by a lot of people, on Reforged at least. Um, so basically, 
in PAAC mode, the one that we're playing right now, you just get a roll, and then you're able to re-roll it whenever you want. Like, if you ever want to re-roll. So, obviously for right now I want to keep this roll. I'm not going to re-roll my roll, actually. Um, and you would, if you wanted to re-roll, you could re-roll up here. As you can see, um, you can get another batch of six random towers if you click on this. And it's totally free for, uh, the first time, no charge. The next time that you do... Uh, randomize your towers again, it'll be 50 gold and 50 crystals that you would have to pay. So at least, um, in case you get a shit roll, at least you get to um, re-roll for free, which is pretty nice. Um, yeah, just basics, just gonna talk about basics. Um, so we have the standard lanes here, the regular lanes, red and blue on this side. Same goes for this, the eastern realm. E um, Bah, can't even speak. Yellow and orange are the regular lanes. They always start off with 465 gold. And the income lane, or the carry lane, which would be teal or green, have more creeps spawning in their lanes, which is why it's called the income lane. Um, the only downside is the creeps are a little bit stronger, but still it's pretty damn good that you get more creeps for more gold. That's why, of course, like I said, it's called the income lane. So the creeps, I wrote it, wrote it down here. When you do get creeps in this lane, they have a 0.4% HP per second regeneration. So they regenerate HP a little bit faster than they would in the regular lane. And their movement speed is also increased by 4%. Those are the basically the differences. And obviously you start with uh, 515 gold, not 465. So you would start off with more gold in this lane. Um, yeah, you start off with more gold in this lane. Um, <laughs> so obviously since I have LOD, I know I could do two wisps. Um, but, but yeah, that pretty much explains the lanes. So, um... For a lot of you guys that are new, if you want to uh, take a look at the levels, you could always type dash info uh, 1, for example. If I don't know what is going to be coming up on level 1, I could always do this. So over here it says recommended value. Um, it's not always true because I could literally make an LOD that's only 320 value and I'm still going to hold easily just because some units are different than others. It's just easier to hold with LOD in the regular lane. Um, yes. Lost my train of thought real quick. <laughs> it's so funny. Um, so yeah, I was just talking about what you what would happen if you if you want to scout out the levels. A lot of this game has to do with just looking at the damage type and the armor type of your units and also the wave units. So, as you can see, level 1 wave, they would do piercing damage, because that's what it says, right? They do piercing damage, and they are unarmored. Relatively um, easy, to be fair, for the first wave. But um, there is one thing, though. You can't choose units that are pretty slow. For example, um, obviously if you were to make... Let's, let's say I got, like, Cavalier. Cavalier is, like, literally... Cavalier or Grizzly, literally one of the worst units you can make for level 1, just because they attack too slow. Um, it's just not... I don't have that in the roll, obviously, right now. I'm just saying, for example, if you were to get some of those units, then, yeah. You would not have a very easy time. You'd be leaking a lot. Um, also, there's, just, there's, like, many options I could do here. There's LOD, there's... Gate guards, there's infantry, two infantries upgraded into pyro, also hold in the regular lane. Obviously, I can't make a, I can't make two wisps with pyro, but I mean, I'm just saying two pyros will hold in the regular lane. Mass peasants is also a really, really good strategy. I think you could do two wisps, two to three wisps with mass peasants. But of course, I'm just going over units right now, which I shouldn't be doing. Um, should really just be explaining more on the game. 
Um, so yeah, there's that. There's also one thing I didn't mention about this. You could also, it's, you don't have to just do like info one. You could even do like, oh, what's the information for level six? So now I see, oh, siege and fortified. And then they also give me the recommended value that I should be on. Um, the other interesting part is at the end of this, they also tell you how many units spawn. So in the regular lane, they spawn 100. In the regular lane, they spawn 100. And in the carry lane, they spawn 120 in this lane. So that's th that's pretty much what that means. Uh, so I guess we can go into uh, looking into the income right now. So obviously, LOD, one of the best income units. So I was able to go for two wisps. So it says it up here under crystals that I have three wisps. You always automatically start off with one. And then I got two wisps over here, which I trained earlier. So right now it just starts off as three zero. Um, obviously, if you send on level one, for example, which a lot of people do, Someone you'll see, oh, look, my income increased by four. Usually you always send a Hermit on level one, on, uh, at least on Reforged. Um, usually when you want to send, you always want to send with the team. You got to make sure you always communicate with your team. Um, you never send by yourself. Just friendly reminder there, because it's really important that you always so you always send with the team. But, um, yeah, then we have also Crystal Harvesting. This one pretty much just, if you ever played, like, Legion to the Omega, it's the same thing as Lumber Harvesting. So, basically, it's exactly what it says over there. Um, instead of gaining two Lumber or two Crystals, um, I don't know in how many seconds, but, um, yeah, after, instead of gaining two, you'd be gaining three if you upgrade this. And uh, obviously, it'd be it'd like continue increasing, of course. The other thing that people don't like is when you're actually uh, researching over here. For example, if I wanted to train a wisp, let's just start off the round real quick, and just so I can show you. Hold on, let's just hurry up. <laughs> let's say I want to train another wisp or a lumberjack, for example. I can't do a farm upgrade just in case I want to get that prepped up. I would have to either cancel this to do a farm upgrade, or I'd have to wait for one of these upgrades to finish. So I wouldn't be able to upgrade my farm if I really needed to. So sometimes you gotta be mindful of if you upgraded your farm or not, which I do tend to forget sometimes as well. Um, also, I forgot to mention that if you did send to the opponent, like, let's say I want to send for ne verse next level. Let's say I want to send a bowman. Just, obviously, you're not going to do this in a game. I'm just saying. Let's just say I want to send. The unit's going to go over here, and eventually it'll be sent to the enemy team. Just like my hermit on level 1. Um, just like my hermit on level 1. Oh, what? I clicked on start by accident. <laughs> I meant to write pause, but um, it's okay. LOD is able to hold level 2 by itself, so we don't have to worry about that. <laughs> That's my bad, I didn't mean to do that. Um, so obviously, crystal harvesting and extra plus 1 wood. I usually go 4-1, and then 5-2, then 7-3. Just depending, you can really upgrade this any way you want. It's just, it's worse if you do um, like 9-0, just wisps. It's worse if you do just Wisps and not um, Crystal Harvesting. Because you wouldn't be getting too much uh, Crystals out of it. It's better to just... Um, let's pause it before I forget. You dead yet? There we go. <laughs> it's better than just doing... Um, the Wisps all the time. To actually be getting... Uh, more lumber per second, or however long it is. I forgot how how long. But yeah, <laughs> let's not get distracted there. Um, Alright, so the next building down here, we have the Guardian's Temple. 
Another way to get income is by upgrading king, as you can see. If you upgrade the attack one time, you will get three income. Just like that. So now I have nine income instead of six income. Um, we're going to upgrade our LOD because this holds level three. So it's the same for upgrading attack. It's the same for upgrading hit points, I mean, and regeneration. Same thing as attack. And um, this is the Guardian, of course. Something that I forgot to mention, which I probably should have mentioned from the beginning, is that the whole point of this game is to make your opponents leak to the king. That way you get more gold. You get extra gold the more um, your opponents leak to the king. And also the whole point of the game is also to make sure that their king doesn't survive, right? So you want to make sure that they lose heals with a very nice and coordinated send by your team. So you're not, remember, you're not just sending by yourself. You want to coordinate with your team. It's always better to send together. That way you can screw over the enemy team and you can make them all leak to the king. It's always the best option. Um, so there is this command called dash gi, which is just guardian information. If you type that, this will show up. Just information about the guardian. Don't really know, didn't really choose a presence, didn't upgrade much king at all. Just one damage, basically. What, what we upgraded so far. Obviously, if I were to, you know, maybe just upgrade HP, you'd see, oh, look. Now it's got one upgrade in HP. And it's just that simple. And this right here, the attack over here, that's just a shortcut. If you have 400 crystals, you can just quickly um, upgrade five levels of attack. And you can see it's basically the same. It's... It's just a little bit faster if you have 400 crystals, if you upgrade with this. Um, I don't even have to... <laughs> yeah. So obviously you can see I'm almost close to uh, the food count. Because of course wisps count as food. LOD counts as two food. And the upgrade for LOD, which is Hades, costs for two food as well. So you gotta keep this all in mind that... Pretty soon you're going to have to upgrade your farm. Um, I'll g okay, so just going to get into, I suppose, the presence now. This one's pretty, like, this is fairly basic right here. You just upgrade the king whenever you need to. Um, you can even decide with your team if you want to upgrade king. It's not said that you have to send all the time. The only pr thing is that some people like to send to try to get a scout. Uh, versus the enemy team first. It's always very important to get scouts. Let's say um, somebody just randomly leaked. Let's say yellow leaked randomly on, I don't know, on level three. Yellow leaked, and then um, the creeps are coming down the middle because he leaked. So you want to always be paying attention as to what units are here holding. Let's say there was an LOD and a green dragon middle. Um, and that's what you scouted. You might but want to be like, Hey team! Let's send... Big... Level 5. They are weak this level. Sure, dude. Then your friend says, sure, dude. Let's do it. Let's just say, so if, if you actually are blessed and have teammates that actually listen, <laughs> then this would be a great teammate to have. But um, of course, um, keep in mind, you can heavily screw over the enemy team. We, you don't know exactly what other units they'll make before level 5, but... You pretty much have a high chance, if they do keep those units and they don't, like, make other units, or they make not as strong units for level 5, you have a chance to make them leak and go to the king. It's all about making them leak to the king for the most part. And, uh, 
a lot of people will be inclined to um, want to send instead of upgrading King usually. Unless, of course, your team's weak or maybe you don't have such a big push. Um, usually if you have a very high push, like already, at, let's say I was 9-3 at level 3. Which usually is pretty common with LOD. Like, I, I know I took my time with this, but I mean like... If I did have this push and like two other teammates were pretty high as well, then maybe you'd want to send early um, versus level 5 or something, I don't know. Or some other level to um, force a scout. Usually level 3 or level 6 are the levels where you um, try to scout also. Um, but as you can see, you get a considerable amount more income if you send units instead of... Um, Upgrading King. For example, look at this. 80 crystals just for 3 income. Look at the dino. It's only 120 crystals for 6 income. If I were to do 2 upgrades of Guardian's attack right now, it would cost me 160 crystals. Which, be, which would be the same amount of income that you would get by sending only one dino. So obviously, sending gives you more income. Uh, with that being known... With that being known, like, you just want to, like, I don't know, you just kind of want to talk about... You, you want to talk with the team to see what's the best option, of course. Um, because I have such a high push, maybe we should just send, you know? Like, just a few things. That. Okay, so let's just start this round off. Obviously, we're gonna hold this um, Just looking at my role this could be a very good unit to make because it's a really nice aura We can make gate guards as well. Oh I just realized those sends go to me also. I might leak this um, So how about we um, How about we speed things up a little bit Obviously, you're not going to get this big of a send on level 3. <laughs> I just kind of did something here. So, yeah, I didn't realize <laughs> what I did here. So, we're going to try to max out our king. Obviously, you can only do this in... Uh... You see how much faster this is? Instead of just doing it once, by just going here. And as you can see... We're getting more and more income. We should be getting every every um, time we click on this, we should be getting 50 in income up top. And that's exactly what's happening. So yeah. We're going to max out our king. I'm not even going to bother king controlling. Obviously, if I realized I was going to send so big, <laughs> I would have made a few more gate guards here, but yeah. <laughs> it's pretty funny. So as that's being taken care of, let's go over presence a little bit. So Dark Presence, um, just keep in mind, if you do upgrade this, you do not actually get the presence. Like it says over here, you have to do all 10 levels of Dark Presence, otherwise you will not have a presence. And it also costs 15 income to uh, do. So obviously that's very low, right? For just 15 income. Like, it's, it's a lot of crystals, but it's really useful for your king. Um, just in case you need it. Just in case you're really bad level 10. Dark Presence is always something you should be getting. Because um, it's the presence that deals the most DPS. Is this one. You can even read it yourself over here. Um, so basically, you get if you do if you do cast this. Let's just go for it real quick. Um, if you do cast this, you get an eight hundred percent increase. Um, clearly, as you can see, I can't use dark presence because I didn't max it. So you can see that that I didn't max it, so I can't use it. Um, also. Just in case, let's say, like on level 3, I completely leaked. I, I leaked badly on level 3, right? 
I leak to the king. The enemy team sees, oh, this guy's full king, but has no presence. You could also hide the presence by just going presence 7, or presence 9. Assuming you have teammates, you can do presence 7, and each one of you upgrade presence once to max it. Since there's, um, it's always 3 on 3 in this game. Um, so obviously, how you know that they have presence. Right now, I just maxed it. They will have this Brilliance Aura looking icon down here. That's how you know someone already went for presence. And when you cast this, it will get that extra 100% increase in damage. It also does splash damage, like it mentions over there. And also lifesteal, which is really good for level 10. That you're doing all this damage to the bosses. As you can see, look at how um, it almost increased by like 500 damage. The... Um, uh, while Dark Presence is active, which is pretty interesting. So yeah, you pretty much have this. You have... Sometimes um, a lot of the spells, or a lot of these presences, you want to get them with... Um, depending on what your spell is. So I, I think this one's the one that... Which one's the one that gives you more mana regen? I don't think there's too many of them, actually. Passively increases mana regen by 1, health regeneration by thir by 50. So they're all passively increases mana regen by 1. That I did not know. The second option... Oh, yeah, this also goes with all the presences, by the way. You always have to max them to level 10, otherwise you can't use them. Time Lord Presence, very useful for um, level 12 and 14. It's also very useful for um, levels that, um, for example, if you want to race the enemy team, if you if you know both teams are going to leak badly, you can go for Time Lord Presence and literally win the race. Let's say they have, I don't know, the enemy team has, has zero heals and you have one heal left. You know they have zero heals. So if you send big and possibly rage towards them, which I will go after, I will go over after. Jeez, my English today. Um, let's say you want to just race, you could also go for Time Lord. But of course it's really risky to go Time Lord um, for late game just in case you leak big on the level. Um, Time Lord is okay for level 12 because... You can pretty much just read what it does. Um, slows down for all enemies. It, it It's good on levels where the um, units don't have too many hit points yet. Um, for example, like this one would be really bad versus level 17. This is probably the worst presence you can get for 17. It is the worst presence you could get <laughs> for level 17. Just because it's not about dealing damage. But it hits multiple targets. So that's why I'm saying like it's better versus level 12 for example where they don't do too much damage and you're also dealing a good amount of damage to the creeps around that level obviously dark presence very good overall um royal presence pretty damn good counter to level 17 in case you're really really damn bad versus level 17 that's always good to get royal presence there i've seen it being used on level 14 as well a few times not too often though um, and just yesterday, I've seen it actually do a decent job against, um, level 24. Um, they went for Royal Presence, yeah. It actually did a good job at clearing, or, er, not clearing, but, like, damaging the creeps. So that's good. So yeah, you could, you guys could literally just look and, like, read what it does. I'm just, like, hovering over them. Uh... Yeah, like you could even pause it and just read what it does. Provoke Anarchy is mainly just for the king. I have not upgraded it yet, but this is another um, upgrade that you need to max to level 10. It's only 50 crystals, so it's not even that expensive. Or it's not even that bad to do. And this is mainly in case you king leak a champion. If you king leak a champion... 
It'll remove all the champion's buffs. It's mainly just for champions. Champions not counting level 10. Level 10 are not champions, they're bosses. So, when, actually when we get to level 6, we, we'll show you the champions. Uh, maybe we should just start building a little bit here. Let's get on with the game so we could also get to Seraphim. I could even just increase my gold just for now. Just to like make things easier. So, just to speed things up. Just so I can also, like, so I could be talking while also, um... I just want to be moving things along. I think I've been taking too much time here. So this should be... This should cover me for a few levels. Just building this much. So, start. Um, so yeah, you always want to get this for, uh, champions leaking to the king, which we will get to after level 5. So, did I even go over this? I didn't go over this. <laughs> God damn it. I was supposed to be going over the basic stuff over here first. So basically, I made LOD level 1. You can sell the fighter for 100% bounty back, but you could only do this for anything that you build on level 1. So if I were to build, let's say, if I wanted to use this on the gate guard that I build on level 4, it's not going to work. You'd have to use it on LOD, something that you built on level 1 already. And as you can see, I got 670 gold, which is the exact amount that... Which is the exact amount that LOD... Like, this is 320, and the upgrade for LOD is 350. So, I pretty much got 100% gold back for both upgrades, which is pretty nice. So that's what that does, uh, this icon. But you can't really use it again. You can use it again, but you're not going to get that much gold back. Um, this is Seraphim. We'll just go over that after, because <laughs> we didn't really get to Seraphim yet. Seraphim's up here. It's pretty rough for me, um... Okay, so now... Now that level 5's over, or now... As soon as level 5 starts, you will get... One random spell... That... Um, one random spell out of the three... And we ended up getting Immolation. So you could either get Immolation, War Stomp, or Shockwave in this game. Which is pretty interesting. Um, let's just start building some stuff. So I don't have to do it later. <laughs> I didn't even know the food limit was like 207. I actually did not know that. Obviously we're gonna hold with all these units. I did like an insane amount here. So yeah, we're gonna go over Seraphim after. Here's a champion. Uh, I wish I showed you guys. I kind of didn't like look at it too for too long. So the rage building, or not the rage building. I like to call it the rage building because that's usually what I use it for. And also um, these other handy dandy tools. So basically, if you're really confident you're holding a level and you know the enemy team is very bad during one level and you want to send versus them, you want to coordinate with your team to rage multiple times. This will continuously keep increasing the attack speed and the movement speed of the creeps uh, the more that you use it. And it could be, um, like it says over there, casted six times um, per wave. Only it can only be casted one time by uh, each player, of course. You can't just keep, you can't just continuously keep like spamming it. Um, you want to also rage. Like you don't want to rage ahead of time. Um, that way, uh, you'll keep the other team guessing. Like you you don't want them to prepare. Like oh, he raged twenty seconds before the round started. Let me build this extra unit. Let me not push. Let me not increase lumber. Let me get more value so I can hold better. That's basically what that's saying. And 
I should have raised. I raised too uh, late because I was trying to explain something. Job done, done. Job done. Job done. You can build however you want. I just like to build in the corners. Alright, so let's start real quick. And rage immediately. Well, it's technically not immediately. Like, the enemy team would not have guessed that you were going to send this level until you actually raged in the beginning. I do want to... I just remembered something. I do want to go over something else about sending. So there's a timer up here. Let's say I want to send uh, on level 10, for example. Let's say I want to send level 10. So let's start this off. Pay attention to the timer. So pretty soon it's going to start glowing red. You do not want to send when it's glowing red if you want to send on level 10. Once it turns green, that gives you the okay that, oh, okay, let's send level 10. This. This means um, you're not sending any creeps on level 9. You will be sending on level 10. Once you see that that red light goes away and it's green, you will be sending all these units. And you may have noticed, the more I'm sending, the more my income's going up. And as you can see, you receive gold for completing the level and also gold from income. This gold that you get extra is from your income. So let's just start level 10 right away. Something else I did not mention. You can start sending... Um, in the advanced barracks, you can start sending Pudge Panda on level 10. Something that I did not mention here. Obviously, I have an insane amount of value, so... These levels are even a challenge just because... I'm just doing this to test. I'm not trying to... Like... You know what I mean. Like, I'm just doing this to test, obviously. So yeah, you can only start sending the ones in the advanced barracks at level 10. So you can't send these before level 10 for income. You'd have to wait till level 10 starts. So you still have some time to send, like... You still technically have some time to send, yes. I like how the king actually chooses the spell, too, for presence. This is Time Lord Presence. <laughs> it's pretty cool. So now after level 10 is over... Um, after level 10 is over, we get an arena battle. So this is basically... Um, all our units... Like, let's say this was um, a full game, for example. It would be my units, Blue's units, and Teal's units versus green, yellow, and orange when the arena starts. So let's start the arena right away. Of course, because I don't have an opponent, we're going to be going against bosses. It tends to balance itself out as well. Let's say like I was going against two other players. It was a one versus two situation. I would have these bosses on my side with, with also Nuok, and I would be going against uh, the units that those two other players had. So, th yeah, this is what the arena battle looks like. And you get 200 gold for winning, which is pretty nice. See, as you can see, Western Realm is, is victorious. We won the arena with our insane value. I gotta say, it's pretty cool that... Um, It's pretty cool that we get to test things out here. Like, we, we get to just do ta dash tests. It just makes things so much easier. Um, one thing I wanted to also mention that I forgot to mention. Before you go level 10, it's really safe to just go 9-5. This is just standard, 9-5. If you feel really confident and you have a good amount of income even, you can go 9-6. A lot of people tend to go 9-6, 9-7 something like Warden, which gives incredibly high income, because um, 
they probably already know they're going to leak level 10, and uh, they're getting ready to do king. Um, kind of like, I didn't put out the video yet, but it's going to be in, in one of my videos um, next, where my friend, uh, they, they sent level 10 on us, and he leaked level 10, and uh, we just spammed Dark Presence. We, we immediately upgraded Dark Presence, and we were able to hold it, which is pretty nice. Um, if I want to reroll, I could always change towers. Like this. So now I only have four rerolls remaining. Did not get a very good roll, but at least I got Priest. This is literally the only good unit that I have in this whole roll. Because I do have the Messiah. This gives Brilliance Aura, of course. This gives a nice aura for mana regeneration. Works pretty well with the Zeus as well, which is nice. Um, I didn't go over this other stuff, so Chill isn't really used at all. It's just a waste of Lumber. Like, let's say I want to Rage. This cost... that's something I didn't mention. If you want to Rage... For, for example, if I want to Rage level 11, it costs 440 to do that. And it, in, it keeps increasing uh, by 40 Crystals every level. So, for example, level 11 was 440. Now we're at level 12, and it just went up 40 crystals, 480 now, to rage. So you can literally rage level 12 creeps, you can cast chill to kind of like decrease the rage. It's basically just, it just tells you, hey, calm down, buddy. <laughs> but yeah, uh, nobody ever goes for this. Um, it would just be a waste of crystals. Unless you're like suiciding to the king, but... Yeah, that's the only time you might want to get that. So command attack, when the timer starts, it'll show you command attack. So basically it just tells these units in this area to move. Like this. And then you also have battalion attack, which... Um, or there's just one type of unit to move. So basically this is telling me all... It's telling all my heralds to move forward. It would be the same for Zeus. It would tell all my Zeus to move forward if I were to use this. Again, Rage, for no reason. Increases the, um... Oh, I already did cast Rage. <laughs> my bad. Yeah, obviously you can't cast it more than once. Command at will just forces them to move. Like, let's say... You have, like, units way in the back, like right here, for example. I have units in the back. Um, and they don't come to the fight because um, the gate guards are being attacked way too early. So they, come, they don't come into the fight because they don't see that these guys are being attacked. There's no aggro, according to these guys, all the way back here. This will make sure they will go into the battle, if you have this enabled. I've never seen um, Guardian Stomp being used too much, but uh, the only time that it actually is good is... Um, let's say you leak level 10 and you want... And you leak kind of early, you want your um, creeps to go to the king faster. Okay, so let's see. That's being aggroed, so now these guys will be moving. Or they should be moving, there we go. Eventually they move. Just because this is enabled. Command at will. That's a pretty nice uh, tool. Of course, you want to be careful not to have this on when uh, when you're going for Seraphim and you go for Spirit of Life. Otherwise, Seraphim revives these units. But of course, I'll go over that after. It's not something to go over right now. Okay. So now, let's say I want to make... These are enough units for me. I don't want to make any more of these units. I could also reroll again. As you can see, it just keeps increasing by 50 food... Or, well, 50 gold and 50 crystals. For next level, it's another increase. It just keeps increasing by 50. Is what I'm trying to say. So I ended up getting this other roll. 
Oh, I even upgraded these ones by accident. <laughs> um, sure. It has begun. So, one thing I wanted to mention... Or, wait, we already kind of went over everything. Oh, okay. There's one, one more thing I want to talk about with the uh, summons. Um, once this level's over. So, if you guys could die fast, that would be nice. <laughs> That's a lot of violators. Let's pause the game real quick. So, some of these sends... Let's... You could see Centurion and Dino. They have... If you spawn them... For example, if I spawn them... You can see they both cost 120 crystals. You can see that right there. It says it right under Summon Centurion, Summon Dino. 120 crystals. Why is it that the Dino gets 6, six income every time you summon it, but Centur... Why is it not paused? Didn't I pause it? <laughs> I was looking at the timer. What the fuck? I don't think I paused it. Okay. <laughs> what the f I'm, I'm tripping. I'm tripping, guys. I'm tripping. <laughs> Jesus. Um, anyways. Why is it that I'm getting 6 income for this and only 5 income for that? The, the, t the game tends to balance itself. So... There's not much benefit that you you will get from a dino. You just get income and a unit that does decent damage for early game. But they pretty much do around the same damage. The Centurion gives this nice arrow. Uh, um, pfft, this nice aura. 40% bonus damage to nearby allies. That's what Centurion does. This is why it costs less income because um, it just tends to like balance it out a little bit, of course. Same with Hermit and Whelp. Whelp's not usually sent. But, um... I'm just saying, like, they both cost 100 crystals. And, uh... Obviously, this one gives you less income just because it's an aura. Again, this one's an aura, so it gives you less crystals. It's the same, same income as a Dino, but it does cost more crystals. So just saying, like, that's the main reason for that. And, uh, yeah, obviously Warlock, because it's so strong, it's, uh, it gives you less income. Ballast does give good income, normal income, I should say. And they're also really good to send versus opponents. Um, these, these ones on the bottom row, oh yeah, also, yeah, Kapudge gives lifesteal. All of these ones are pretty much auras, Pandaren, um, Pudge. A lot of these guys are. The ones on the bottom row you can only get um, when you get to level 15 or over. Like you can start sending these. Obviously Behemoth does the same thing as Furbog. Except Furbog gives you plus 3. This one gives plus 4. It's a stronger unit with spell immunity so I'm just assuming it's just... I don't know. It's just harder to kill. It, it, it kind of feels like Furbog is better. But... Frobog's... Frobog doesn't have many hit points. It's only 390. This one's got a lot more. I can't really send it right now, so I can't show you. But... Yeah, at least it's more. Alright, so how about we go again... We, um... Got kind of dark in this room. Hold on. I was gonna say I want to go over Seraphim right now. Alright, so let's just say this big boy over here, he's Seraphim, he's got 20 levels, you can level him up 20 times. You can level him up while um, by um, using this Essence Transfer or just Soul Transferring your units to Seraphim. Um, before actually transferring your units to Seraphim or even using this, you should um, get his power to 50-50 first. You should max his power first. 
So let's just say, for example, I want to build four acolytes. Actually, we'll make five acolytes. So making five acolytes is the equivalent of 100 food, right? Making a revenant plus an acolyte, well, you know, the upgrade for acolyte is revenant. That's also 100 food. I can soul transfer. I can't speak. I can soul transfer this to Seraphim right now. His power will go up to 10 out of 50. And so does the value. The value always goes up no matter what. Like, for example, if I wanted to soul transfer this, you get less value. You get, you get less power. You get the same amount of value. I'm sorry, I sh you, you get the same amount of value, but less power. This is why you see me spam a whole bunch of small units first. Because it gets Seraphim to power faster. So as you can see, it's much better if you want to max the power first, it's much better to spam smaller units. Because I made a Revenant and I gave it to Seraphim, the power did not go up very much. It only went up by 1.8. That's nothing. Um, always the same value, remember. Always the same value. But if you want to increase the power, you want to do just um, spam small units. And uh, yeah, as you can see, it increases a lot more than an upgraded unit like Revenant. Um, now, this only happens because I'm testing. You can't actually transfer units, soul transfer units to Seraphim during the round. You would have to do it the next round. So on level 16, let's say I want to make, I want to transfer all these Aquas to Seraphim right now. Or all these Acolytes. I technically can't do it in the same round on level 15. I would have to wait for level 16 to do it. Again, only because I'm testing, they're letting me do this. They're letting me transfer it on the round. So obviously now my power is 50-50. I'm a strong Seraphim. Um, every 500 value, your Seraphim will level up. So right now, um, it's going to go up to... Right. Up to 1,500. I know it says... It, it, usually you ha you gotta spend like 500 gold. Like for example, if I were to get, just do it right now, it just goes up by 500. Every 500 gold, or 500 of your value, levels up Seraphim. Once you level up Seraphim all the way, eventually every five levels you get an ability for Seraphim. You get to choose between Essence and Hands, or a spirit of life. So basically, essence enhance is a very strong ability for Ser for Seraphim. Um, as you can see, you could just read what it does. It gives life and mana regeneration, ten per ten per second. It gives a nice life boost and also mana boost. Something that um, eventually spirit of life will also give you, but. Not as strong, of course, because this one has cleave attack. Um, so cleave attack is more if you want to be a powerhouse with Seraphim. Spirit of Life is if you want to make a few more units. If you if you want to make units to revive, I should probably just hold on. I should build Seraphim. Did did I mention that you need twenty food? Yeah, you need. You need to have at least 20 food available for Seraphim in order to build them. So obviously right now I'm way over the food limit. I can just build them. I can just send them over. So once you click on that button, you can just drag them over and build them wherever you want. With um, place Seraphim, yep. Oh, it tells you right there. Um, requires 20 food to build them. And minimum value is 500. So obviously I have enough value for Seraphim. So a lot of the times, um, Cleave is just 
strong for Seraphim if you don't have too many units. Um, let's just take a look at Spirit of Life, for example. Um, Spirit of Life, you always want to use the hero Brilliance Aura. You always want to go with Archmage if you go for Spirit of Life. Just because you run out of mana too fast. Always go for Archmage. I, t I sometimes forget to do that. I Sometimes I'm pressed on time and I forget to do it. Which is unfortunate. You can upgrade the hero as many as three times. Actually, we could even go over all the heroes, but... The main ones are usually Archmage and Medusa. Um, usually when you go for Cleave, a lot of players like to go Medusa. This, that extra slow aura is just so helpful. There's so many other auras that you can get though, like even Priestess of the Moon, True Shot. Um, if you have a lot of melee units, I guess you can go for Vampiric Aura. But generally, um, these two are the ones that are used. But you, if you do go for Spirit of Life, always go for Archmage. Always. Even if you have Messiah, you should always go for Archmage. That extra mana regen always helps. So what is Spirit of Life? So Seraphim sends a spirit to aid them in battle. It revives dead units. So that's why a lot of the times you see me um, build like an Elite Archer in front of Seraphim. Just because Elite Archer is broken when you revive it. Um, since it obviously attacks multiple targets. Um, yeah, so it buffs dead allies relative to Seraphim's level. If Seraphim is about to die... Um, excuse me, I got a drink. I feel like... When I'm talking too long, I kind of get too tired. When I'm talking long like this... <laughs> It's kind of getting hot in the room also. Um, so yeah, when he's about to die, he gets a 20% increase in health, depending on the level as well. You could just read what it says over there. So these orange, like you see where it says life buff and damage buff, all these things. That actually means, let's say you want to... This this actually goes for um, reviving a unit. That's what that means. It's not that Seraphim gets those buffs. I'm pretty sure it's not. That goes to the revived unit. So obviously right now my Seraphim's uh, level 5. Let's say I want to revive... Uh, I guess a Priest is a good unit to revive. We'll build him in the front. We will go for Spirit of Life. Um... Jesus, I don't know why I get... I feel like I get so tired. I can't even speak anymore. I was speaking so well in the beginning, and now I'm just like, uh, I'm so out of it. Uh, the Spirit of Life sacrifices itself, replenishing Seraphim for 20% health. So that, uh, that one actually pertains to Seraphim. The life buff, you can see, like... Yes, my let's just start the level. Um, actually, we want to make the Archmage first before we start. So once this dies, we want it to die. It's gonna get 17... Wait, please tell me it's dead. No, we healed it too much! Because the priests in the back were healing it. Damn it! <laughs> Didn't get to show it. <laughs> I'll show it next. I'll make sure it really does die. I'll send it... Extra early. <laughs> the unit has to die in order to see the buffs. So, it gives that extra HP buff. It gives the extra damage buff um, to the unit that dies. So that priest would get, like, insane stats. And it also gives um, attack speed, what it was saying. It was saying that for Spirit of Life. So, Dino, if you can just hurry up so I can show everybody the buffs of the priest. Yeah, attack speed buff, all those nice things.
Die, please. Ugh, I'm so mad it's a range wave. Wait, it died, it died, it died. So now that it revives, it gets extra HP, an attack buff, and also it attacks faster. As you can see, even one of the, um, spot the summons, one of the summons got revived because it got killed. So that's pretty interesting. As long as you keep having mana for Seraphim, he can just keep reviving units. That's why the Brilliance Aura is so important. Um, if you go for Spirit of Life. Another thing, another thing I want to talk about is... I really wish my dog can stop barking also. <laughs> um, kind of distracting. Make a whole bunch of units just so I don't leak. There we go. This should cover me for a few levels. I really wish my family can shut my dog up. I'm kind of recording right now. I can't really go. Unless I have to go. So... Let's level up Seraphim a little bit more. We could also just... Remember, we could do this also to get Seraphim's uh, value up. We could also Soul Transfer units. And you can see the value shut up like crazy. And then once you go for Essence Transfer, it just rounds up to 5,000. So it'll take... Um, what is that? 65 gold? It'll just give take 65 gold away. So now we get level 10 abilities. Remember, Seraphim gets abilities every 10 levels. Or, pff, every 5 levels. Every 5 levels, I meant. So I tend to go for this ability if I was not doing Spirit of Life, if, if I was doing Cleave. It just makes the, more, the most sense to me. Um, so basically, Seraphim uh, takes less damage from creeps in 500 AoE. And um, obviously, because if I, I don't have Spirit of Life, I don't have the ability to heal up. So I think I feel like an ability that makes me take less damage um, makes more sense to me. Spirit of Pain, you can you guys can literally just read what it does. Uh, summons a spirit. Um, so basically, um, there's another spirit that's fighting for Seraphim if you choose this ability. Which I will choose because I went for Spirit of Life. I will choose this one. I think it's always best with Spirit of Life. Um, if you choose Spirit of Life, you go Spirit of Pain. So what does this thing do? It gets a skill, the Spirit of Pain. It gets Corrupted Soul, which is a skill that nullifies enemies' armor. Which is really good, in case, um, I don't know, you send like a Furbog or Behemoth. It doesn't care about armor. It also does what? It doesn't it do chaos damage? It does do chaos damage, it's really nice. Duration lasts for 6 seconds, mana cost. And uh, I think it says somewhere that it takes, yeah, the last sentence on the top. It says, um, it takes Seraphim's mana in order for it to stay alive, to get healed. So that's pretty nice. Obviously, I didn't go over Surge yet. But, uh, let's take a look at the extra buffs that the uh, Priest gets now that Seraphim's level is at level 10. So it should be getting an extra 2,500 hit points. So we're going to see that change. It's going to be 840 plus 2,500. And plus, it should be getting that extra damage buff. It should be 140 plus 140 damage right here once the level starts. So let's take a look. Of course, this needs to die. So please die. So once it revives... Aha. Uh -huh. Once it revives, look at those extra hit points and look at the extra attack, 140. So... The more you increase Seraphim's level, the stronger Spirit of Life is going to be. It's pretty complicated stuff usually, but like, I don't know. I'm, I'm not very good at explaining really, but you can kind of like read what it does and everything. 
Um, let's pause the game real quick. So, yeah, like I said, the um, hero has three levels. And um, it does cost four food every time to increase the level. Just make a few units. Just so I don't have to worry about it later. So let's try to get our Seraphim up to level 15 now. Let's try and see. Um, another very good unit to buff or, or to revive is Zeus. Zeus is actually a really good unit to revive. So we're going to try Zeus this time. Let's get to fight. Let's try Zeus. We want to build him nice in front so he dies. It's kind of weird how it kind of looks like he has a long dick. I, 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 I just had to throw that out. Whenever you move it, they, they always do this weird animation. <laughs> it's kind of awkward. But, uh... Let's get to fighting. Let's soul transfer. Let's just say we want to soul transfer these Zeus to Seraphim. Now he's level 13. Because remember, every 500 value, Seraphim levels up. You could even just do this to level Seraphim up. It costs 500 gold. Usually the ability that you should always pick is Essence Judgment. I have never once seen Spirit of, F of Faith come into play. Because Essence just Judgment is just too damn good. So, basically, Seraphim judges seven random targets, um, damaging them. So, you can see down there, um, where it says damage, it's written in orange. The damage is actually 60% six, to all the creeps around the Seraphim, the ones that he attacks. It says seven targets. It damages seven targets. So, it does 60% of their max life. That's what it says over there. And it also stuns for four seconds. Um, right. So while doing so, while doing um, this judgment thing, Seraphim also increases 10 levels. So of course, you already know how strong Seraphim gets every time his level increases. Um, this is, again, really good spell. You always want to choose this one. Um, shit, I didn't mean to choose this right away. I didn't scroll over this one, but I do have it written down. That one was Spirit of Faith. It summons spirits that deal deals enemies to damage. <laughs> I can't speak. I, when I talk too long, I just can't speak. It summons a spirit that deals damage to enemies. It, um, the spirit is actually the spirit of faith is actually invulnerable itself and attacks three enemies at a time, and the DPS increases as a seraphim level is higher. So the the higher the level, again, the damage of the spirits it's the spirit will get more damage the higher the level seraphim is. So obviously on level twenty the spirit would do more damage. I can't really show you because I don't usually go for this. But um, you'll so soon see on the next level what this judgment does. So how about we take a look at the level. Uh, also, let's keep in mind the level 15. So if we take a look at Spirit of Life, our Zeus should be getting 3,250 extra hit points out of his 450. And he will also be getting 170 more damage. Unfortunately, we can't really see the attack speed, but, you know, you get a, a good indication of what Let's it can do. You, you kind of see, you kind of will see that it'll attack fast. So, let's get this started. Uh, I think I... I hope that dies. It does. Nice. So, 200 attack, actually. Did I miss something? Its attack is increased by 200. And its hit points are... I think I missed something. Why is the attack 200? Unless Zeus normally gets... Hmm. Show us a target! It's getting an extra plus 30 from something. I'm not sure what's going on right now. 
I'm a little bit confused about that. Oh, so it's already giving, at level 15, it's already giving it 200 damage buff. I don't know why it's doing that. I thought I had to be level 20 for that. Interesting. Because you saw in level 10, he was, it was only 100, it was only 170, right? Or, or 140. So I'm not really sure why I went a shot up to 200, but it's interesting though. Um, out with it. So let's just level up our Seraphim. Right now he's level 19. Um, on level 20, we're able to choose his final ability. Remember, every five levels. Um, let's just reroll just to see what I get. Just because I don't want that roll anymore. Flying Machine is very nice, and so is Assault Tank. Very nice. Again. Obviously, I should be pushing, but I'm just doing a test. I'm not really looking to um, try hard this game. I'm just testing this game right now. You want to make, obviously, the... You really want to make the mana as close as possible to uh, Seraphim, but this is fine. Yeah, ideally, you don't really want to make Seraphim over here. Can you always place Seraphim around? I don't even know. Because it seems like you don't have to... Okay, I'll just put him back to normal. Let's start the game. Let's start, let's start the level. So now we're going to revive our Zeus again, which is going to be really good for this level because it's going to be doing piercing damage. Look at that. So right now we have 9,500 value in Seraphim. And you can see his hit points are increasing like crazy. So I think it does also go towards Seraphim, I believe. Every time it levels, yeah. Let's say I want to level him right now. Hold on, pause. He's got this much hit points. We level him. Hit points increase. Alright, so we have Essence Nova, which I don't normally use. I've, I have I feel like Heaven's Army is always better because it does really well versus boss rounds. This is basically the same thing as Carrion Swarm. This is basically what it does. That's Carrion Swarm. Um, exactly what it says is the same thing as Carrion Swarm. Damage dealt to the spirits. Or, yeah, releases an army of spirits, which is pretty much just like the Locust. To attack Seraphim's enemies. Damage dealt by the spirits heal the Seraphim once the duration is over. So the duration actually lasts for 20 seconds, so it takes a good amount of time. This is a very good spell to use when you have Spirit of Life, just in case your Seraphim is taking too much damage and you don't heal up in that 20 seconds. You always have Spirit of Life to heal you up. As it mentions over there, Spirit of Life heals you up by 20% before he dies. So it's always nice. By 20% plus, of course, the amount of levels Seraphim has. So it keeps going up, basically, the more levels he has. Um, spirits do good amount of damage. They also cost mana, of course. This is almost never used. Like, I know it's his cooldown, but it's almost never used two times, usually. Um... The Judgment is rarely also used two times, um, unless, of course, you're really taking a long time to uh, take the creeps out uh, in the rounds. Every time, F as this is the other uh, skill, Essence Nova, which I don't use it too often, but I would love to explore it a lot more, of course. Every time Seraphim receives 2,000 damage, it, re it releases an Essence Wave that deals magic damage depending on the level of the Seraphim, to all enemies while he healing, while heals allies. Oh, I, <laughs> I don't know why I couldn't read that well. 
So it does 2,000 damage in that five that 515 AOE. I've seen people use this a lot. You guys can let me know if it's uh, useful. But um, I really like the Heaven's Army a lot because it just helps you versus the boss rounds so much. Um, boss rounds are level 10, level 20, which is it's really important for level 20 to get, go for this. And um, level 25 as well is also another boss round. Um, so yeah, we'll try this out. Let's try the next level. As you can see, you only get five rerolls. Level 20 are the new ox. Zeus is revived again. So obviously, I have so much value that I don't have to worry about. You see these like little, these little flurry things. That's what the essence, um, the Heaven's Army is. Basically, it's that. Those little Novas flying around. So obviously, um, now that level 20 is over, there's another arena battle. So I'm going to be fighting the uh, computer again. Or because they don't obviously they're not building on this side. Let's just start that off. Oh yeah, and obviously you can send this row. Actually, we can take a look at the hit points this has. So this has a lot more hit points. It'll stay alive longer than the Furbog would. That's usually why Behemoth is sent. Even though it only gives like a, a plus an extra armor. Like Furbog is plus three, this one's plus four. It's still better, just because it survives longer. <laughs> I like how the demon's over here. <laughs> Another useful tip, um, or something useful about Spirit of Pain, which is what we saw right there. That was the Spirit of Pain. It does not, it also, um, you know how Infernals ignore the army? This does not ignore Infernals. It actually attacks Infernals, which is pretty nice. So it can get you to kill Infernals. This is another reason why this is really useful. It's really good, actually. Um, just for that reason, too. Because Infernals are always such a pain. They're, they're like really strong units to send all the time. <laughs> I like how there's the Behemoth. So you can see the creeps get plus four armor when the behemoth is around them. There's 30 levels in this game, but usually a lot of the games end around like 25, level 25, level 26. I still didn't go over surging, so we're going to do that next level. Because I forgot about it, of course. Infernal just has all these great abilities. Bashes. There's the immolation that's really strong. This is very key to send versus um, a guy that has slaves, necromancers, all those really annoying units to deal with. Um, usually you always send two infernals. You send this immediately. Not like what I did. You send it immediately um, when the round before starts. Because you want to send it as soon as possible. You want to be able to send two Infernals in one round. Again, a lot of this stuff you guys have to um, kind of look at yourselves. I, I can't like entirely explain everything. Especially the units as well. The units are really important to um, just practice and go over with them. Like you gotta practice with a lot of different units Get on with it. and uh, with it. How I just go? see how you can hold some levels. So we're gonna reroll. We're gonna take a look if we get some other units. The main reason for a lot of people rerolling is you wanna try and get 
as many auras as possible. Auras are always really important for your army. Always. So, obviously, as you can see, Tree of Time is really good. Slows down creeps. So we're going to have at least two Tree of Times if we're going to build like this. And these ones give increased movement speed to allies. These ones just slow. Kraken is something else you can send to slow down um, a unit's attack speed. Because it's um, the Kraken poison slows, as it says over there. Pudge, of course, gives lifesteal. Pandaren provides increased movement speed. Even, um, and the, the panda itself gets bonus regeneration, which is pretty nice. Frost aura, this gives another aura. Also really nice. Um, to send on some levels. So, we didn't talk about surging. Um, you can only surge three times, so you gotta be really careful... Um, as to when you use it. So you gotta also pay attention to your team. Um, basically you want to uh, coordinate which with your team which levels you're gonna surge and which levels your team's gonna surge, of course. So you're not always gonna be surging at all levels. Um, right, so just take a moment to see uh, what it says. Obviously, if you surge, your Seraphim gains two additional scales. Immolation armor. So, basically, immolation. And it's really good to have immolation and cleave uh, when you surge. It's actually really strong. Um, let's just read it out loud. Damage all units and 225 AoE for 14 DPS. And also provides additional armor. That's that that additional armor is really important, and um, it also increases his um, the Seraphin's attack speed, movement speed, and also gives hit points. So hit points and mana points. So let's just try to I don't know surge level twenty two just to see. We should be seeing an increase in three thousand hit points, which we do, right there. There's the increase in armor. Extra mana points as well. Because we surged. 500 mana points. It used to be 600. So obviously we're going to see him perform this level. Um, again, very important that you communicate with your team. And uh, you don't all... You shouldn't all surge on the same level. Because, um, remember, you only get three charges, and unless you un unless it's like level 24 and you guys are all weak to 24, then, and you're also expecting Ascend on 24, then uh, that's when I would say you guys should all surge. But uh, usually you want to cooperate with your team. Or at least, if your team doesn't talk, then maybe just... Just look at yourself. What levels are you weak to? Basically. Remember, you could always look at the armor types as well. Armor type for 22, they do siege damage and they have fortified armor. So obviously tanks are going to be dealing a lot of damage to these guys. Quite clearly. <laughs> the Infernal. Remember, it always has that chance to bash. And uh, basically, the Infernals, they act as slaves. Or, they, I, 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 they don't act as slaves, I mean the unit slaves. They don't get attacked during the rounds by your units. They get attacked last. Unless you have Spirit of Pain. Or some units are not in the... Sometimes the um, Plague Spreaders kill them too, I've noticed. Um, I kind of want to... I noticed my Seraphim got blocked that last round, so I kind of want to, like, move units around. 
I'll, I'll tell you why my dog is actually barking right now. There's been a, um... There's like a nest of rabbits outside. Right outside my uh, front lawn. And, uh, she hates rabbits. She hates anything that's little, so there's like little baby rabbits there. And she usually, um, tries to go after them. But right now she's like... Barking from the inside, of course. She's not outside. So Spectre is a really nice unit to make. Always. Really good versus boss rounds. It's going to really help me versus level 25. We've also got Siege. I probably just want to stay with this roll. I gotta remember, remember that I have these Violators over there, those solo villain. My Assault Tank actually got revived, which is pretty interesting. <laughs> you don't get to see that often. So as you can see, because of my Brilliance Aura, look at Seraphim's mana. He's always getting more and more mana, and he's also using it at the same time. Oh, I'm silly. I don't think I even showed you guys... The judgment. Did I? Did I even see? Did we even see that? Hi. Don't think we saw that. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. We're gonna upgrade all of these, and we're probably just gonna make tanks. It's probably enough tanks. I mean, this is my last roll. So it's actually a pretty strong roll for my last roll. You get tanks and Spectre. I think it's pretty damn good. I think you should just make Spectres for now. Let's start the level. Let's take a look at... Judgment. So let's take a look at the stun. That's Judgment. You see those lights? That's saying it's hitting multiple targets. That's Judgment. And it's also stunning them. We see the Spear of the Pain. It keeps taking... It keeps healing. It's taking um, Seraphim's mana. Unfortunately, it died, I think. I don't think it survived. Yeah. He doesn't cast another Spear of the Pain. Um... There's a duration towards it. For, or, there's a cooldown. Okay, there's the Spear of the Pain again. Right there. How long is the cooldown? I can't remember. Well, actually, it only lasts six seconds. I don't think it can be killed. Oh, no, it can be killed. Okay, the other one can't be held. Spe Spirit of can't be killed. Spirit of Faith, the one for level fifteen, but we went for Judgment. Okay, Hi. I'm learning as I'm explaining as well, so this is pretty good. I'm learning things. I like it. So for this level, we want to surge because it's level twenty-five, really hard one. There is this little trick that allows you to always continuously keep moving your units. So, once you press V for movement obelisk, um, remember, you could always move your units however you want. You have movement obelisk, you could always move your units anywhere. Um, with this. This is always a handy tool. So you just press V. And you right-click two times somewhere else, like away from the creep. This allows you to continuously keep moving units as many times as you want. Which is really helpful for when you have Spirit of Life. If you want to change units that you want to revive, for example. So like, you see I'm doing it again. Press V. Let's send it over here, for example. Um, then press V again. Right-click somewhere else. And there you go. Now you're able to move it again next round. 
I'll just I'll show you just for example if we if we get past level 25 that is which we should be able to do We have a good amount of priests, so I feel kind of confident. This is always a very difficult level, remember? Not to take lightly. Did I even surge? I think I did, yeah. Spectres are very good this level. They uh, traumatize the creeps. Obviously, I haven't seen value. Something I didn't mention also. Um, the crystal harvesting, you can go all the way up to 916. But uh, usually that's not met in most games. As for crystal harvesting, you want to stay 9-5 at level 10 if you're not too confident. 9-5 is also is always a good amount to stay at. That's normal. Um, also, if you want to hold for the team and you have good piercing units, you want to stay 9-5. Um, usually, after level 10, you always want to push crystals. These are all things that I have not explained before, which I probably should have. Um, yeah. Always want to push crystals, depending on how strong you are, of course, on the next levels. Uh, right, so we moved this guy before, right? Look, we can move him again, because we did the trick. Remember, it's V. Double right click. Oh, I don't want to move him there. Hold on. I gotta place him first. Place him first. Then do this. Wait, it's not working. <laughs> For some reason, it's doing something weird right now. I don't know what's going on. Yeah, don't be scared if you don't see it, the unit anymore. Usually, you gotta, like, scroll over the um it's uh, yeah it's weird it's not doing it anymore probably because i've done it too many times see it's weird i don't know what's going on right now or maybe because hmm i wonder if it's because we're on uh Level 26, who knows? Yeah, I'm not sure what I did wrong. You guys let me know. <laughs> I have no idea what I just did wrong right now. Got a good chunk of Mercurials. Always really strong. I'd say, depending on your units, you want to stay around 9-9 or 9-11, around level 17. Sometimes I like to stay 9-11 like the whole game. It really depends on how the game goes, it depends how much income you have also. And uh, also depends... Um, when your teammates send, when your enemies send. That's also something that it depends on. Usually you want to increase the amount of crystals you want to harvest. You want to push, and in other words, you want to keep increasing this um, right after your opponents send. That's usually a good idea, especially if you hold. It's like perfect. It's a perfect situation for you. So this is what level twenty. What is this? Is it? It's twenty-seven, right? Yeah, crypt lords. Well, I shouldn't be having all this value, but... Unfortunately, my Seraphim's stuck. <laughs> I'm basically building all, all of this just so I can get to level 30, just to show you guys. I don't know. I feel like I didn't do the best job. Like, I, I could definitely explain this stuff a lot better. I'm usually not that good at explaining. But I, I more or less, like, went over the basics. So you can see, you can use Guardian's Taunt. I use Guardian's Taunt on this guy. He has increased movement speed. 
Again, this isn't really used that much. I like the revived menaces. This is pretty interesting. It's gonna be pretty hard for me to die here. I have a lot of units. So yeah, obviously, something else I didn't mention. Obviously, the more crystal harvesting you do, the more expensive it's going to be. So to go 9-9, this one's just 200 gold, 200 income, or 200 crystals. But um, to go 9-9 is 250 and 225. So 250 gold, 225 crystals. You'll see in just a moment. So we will be going to level uh, 30 here, even though these guys have insane attack power, or attack speed, I mean. The helicopter aura is really nice, I hope it doesn't die. Looks like they're getting focused. So yeah, 250, 225. It just keeps increasing, obviously. It's not going to be cheap. And now we got to this last round, which I'm pretty sure is impossible to beat. How about you hurry up? Yeah, hurry up. <laughs> Bring it on! Oh, he actually gets more armor because I taunted him. Whoops. <laughs> or at, at least at that moment. I didn't realize that. I don't think he dies. I think he just kills everything. Ooh, I didn't... He has insane regeneration. So that damage was... <clears throat> that damage was from, uh... From Judgment. The damage that I did to him. That, that chunk of damage that I just did before. So yeah, this level is not beatable. Um, so unfortunately the game is over right here. I'm trying to think what else what else do I have to go over? I feel like I'm missing I miss I miss so many things. Oh yeah, obviously this is I can't believe I didn't even go over this. The score doesn't really mean much. Guardians heals and life is right here. These these number ones right here is the amount of heals each team has. And Obviously, this is how much HP the Guardians have. You can just see it right there. My Seraphim died <laughs> while I wasn't looking. This guy just has insane damage and regeneration, so it's not really possible to kill him. Um, even with this value, it's not really possible. So yeah, there's, this is what this is. You can see the heals right here. Um, you can also see the heals down here, though. Um, Guardian information. Not really mu I don't, really don't know what else to say. Um, unit spawn here. You finally get to see leaks. I guess this counts as a leak. He's probably just going to one-shot my king or something. <laughs> Waiting for it. Ooh, not one-shotting, but he's dealing good damage. So I could even use Immolation if I want. Provoke Anarchy does not work on bosses. That's what a heal would look like. Still have Dark Presence active, but it doesn't matter because that guy is, does it not die. Oh yeah, I sure lost. I was defeated here. So 
So when the game ends, it goes to the screen. You get to see fighter value, income, highest income. I was the only one in the game, so obviously it's going to be everything me. Um, you also get the buildings on the side here in case... Like, that's usually useful for um, when you're controlling king. Like, if you have to do, like, a quick upgrade, you get to um, just go up there. If you don't have your, um, I suppose if you don't have your buildings upgraded, or not upgraded, hotkeyed. I don't know why I said upgraded. Um, Jesus, we've been in this game for a long time. Yeah, I kind of wish I went over the lumber harvesting earlier. I feel like th there's just so many things in this game that you kind of just forget. Th there's so many things to talk about. You kind of just forget everything. Unless I literally, like, write it down, like, and I have, like, a script. But I don't really like doing a script. I like doing everything, you know. I just kind of like doing everything... I, I don't want to say unprepared, because I still was somewhat prepared for this. But I mean, like... I like to say it by heart all the time. I don't like to say it by script, usually. I like to just talk by heart. So, that's usually... That's just me. That's just me. I don't know if it's the same for you guys, too, but... Um, I don't know. These are some of the basics about... Um, Hell Hall TD. Obviously, there's... There could have been a few things that I missed, but I think I pretty much covered everything, I believe. I just didn't go over the units, of course. Um, just know that auras are very important to get, as always. Um, if I ever do another tier list, that's probably where I'm going to mention or talk about a lot of the units. So, yeah. If I ever do a tier list then that's where I'll do pretty much a tutorial of units. So, yeah. But I don't know if I'm going to do that, because that's a lot of work. <laughs> so, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed, and I hope this was helpful for a lot of you guys. Again, I'm not very good at explaining things. I just try. Um, it was kind of annoying, because, like, when I was explaining Seraphim, I, I I don't know what it was. I just, I was just I felt like I was getting tired or something. Just too much talking, maybe. <sighs> yeah, I guess it's hot in the room, but yeah, it doesn't really matter that much. I just kind of felt tired. The eighty degree days usually don't bode well for me. But um. Yeah, hope to hope this helped anybody. Hope this was a decent tutorial. Um, yeah, hope you guys. Uh, hope I see you guys in a hell hot match, or hope you guys. I don't know. Watch my videos, of course, as usual. So uh, yeah, see you guys later, and just gonna sign off. Peace.